jump ahead to S232 uh, to take our, our vote on that. Um, posted, you should find um, the instances of Amendment 232 is the um, implementation of the um, juvenile jurisdiction, um, raise the age, um, the, um, that technical um, bill that was part of a larger bill. Um, people remember what I'm talking about. I don't want to say repeat too much, but I also do want to refresh folks' memory. Uh, let me see if I can. Okay. Uh, so uh, when we met on Friday, we looked at section 11, um, which we were asked to include, and that was the language regarding um, um, separate facilities, uh, DOC, and, and the word separate was, was taken out. Uh, my understanding had been that this was a technical amendment codifying um, current practice. And I know Barbara had um, had some con concerns about about the practice and whether or not we were codifying something that's not good policy. Um, at that point, I felt that we were maybe going into House Corrections um, jurisdiction. So I asked that committee to take a look at it. Um, I also reached out to uh, the Defender General's office and um, did hear back from Marshall. I don't. See Marshall here. I do see that um, that uh, Matt, our Defender General, is here, possibly for the other bill. But but basically, that um, the Defender General's office position was that it is technical, it is codifying, and 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 at this point, they you know they were okay with that that language. And I just heard from Representative Emmons that their committee um, supports that language. Uh, by a vote of nine zero two. So um, I would like to leave it um, in there and I'd like to move these instances of amendment, which basically allows the raise the age um, to be implemented. Um, the older group there, if you look at the effective dates, the, um, uh, the 19 year olds don't go into effect from a, um, until a year from now, which is consistent. Uh, so, that's, I would uh, like to, uh, to move that because this is, um, as we heard from the commissioner of DCF, this is important for, for DCF to have to, uh, to move, uh, raise the age. Uh, we're Serena. raising, we're, well, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I just Serena. wanted to really quickly make sure I fully understood. So we're voting on sections through section 11 and then that, is that correct? Those are the, areas of our jurisdiction. Um, exactly. So um, so one through 10 is the actual raise the age and 11 has, you know, the, the DOC language in it. So right. And then the rest of it is um, regard is regarding Woodside and that's been handled elsewhere. Okay. Uh, Tom and then Barbara. No, I'm all set now. Thank you. Okay, Barbara. So Maxine, I understand that the Defender General's office is okay with it. Um, I still am concerned about it. Like just philosophically, I don't think it's the right technical move and just feel like it goes against all the other um, work we've been doing related to brain development and treating people under 25 differently. So while I support the rest of the bill, I can't, I can't support that. I, I understand, I understand. I, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, Will. Thanks. Um, yeah, I also share concerns about this. Um, Marble Valley Correctional Facility uh, is in my district. Um, and the idea that there are some younger offenders who technically they're, you know, they're segregated from the main population, um, but the fact that they're in there um, does make me uneasy. It is not a, uh, it is not a, a trend I want to see built off of, quite frankly. On um, that said, I certainly uh, recognize that we are in like triple overtime here. I certainly do not want to sink the provisions of the, the rest of the provisions of the bill. So. I guess I'm down for this one as a, a hesitant yes vote. Appreciate that. Tom. 
Yeah, I, I guess I, I just need a uh, a little background or an update on exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> Um, okay, so let me uh, let me pull up two thirty two. That might be the easiest because then you'll you'll see the um, the language. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have it in front of me here. So okay, so I don't, but I believe the um, the word separate is um, is taken out. Right, that's to be deleted, and so it leaves the word appropriate. Okay, and that's that's it because because right now my understanding from from testimony is that um, that in terms of separate, you know, like separate facilities, DCF, you know, cannot do that, but they still will separate populations according to federal law and 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 otherwise. And that appropriate is broad enough to, if at some point separate um, facilities are possible, appropriate is broad enough to encompass that. I don't know, Martin, do you want to? Add anything? I know you looked at this as, as well. Well, I, I just thought, I mean, they're, they're not uh, prevented from having the separate facilities if they, in fact, consider it appropriate. I mean, appropriate is pretty broad, so it would subsume, you know, having a separate facility in the instances where that is deemed appropriate. You know, maybe I'm being too legalese on this, but, uh, you know, separate is kind of subsumed by the appropriateness of the facilities. but. And I did find that, you know, the fact that Marshall weighed in and, and that they were fine with this and, and he's been a great advocate for dealing with this issue uh, certainly convinced me that that we should proceed with this. Does that help, Tom? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I'm all set on it now. I, um, <clears throat> I'm going to assume that there was probably some discussion on this Friday. <laughs> Um, and uh, the, the Reader's Digest version today uh, certainly gave me enough uh, information to be able to support it. So, yeah, we were we were rushed on Friday, and so it was it was quick discussion. And I had my understanding was that this was a technical um, amendment, and uh, thought that squeezing it on Friday would be okay. And then Barbara raised you know understandable concerns, and. Uh, which is why I put the the boat on hold on uh, on Friday. Yeah. Well, I mean, in a perfect world, you know, we would uh, uh, our ages wouldn't be eighteen or nineteen or twenty one. They would be twenty five. Um, and you know, as time goes on, with a lot of uh, a, a lot of things that we do do and do pass, uh, we're making baby steps toward that age of twenty five. And in a lot of different instances, um, I mean it. And, and sometimes uh, I know myself, I just have to look at that as, uh, you know, as progress, even, even though we may not be getting to the, you know, the, the pot of gold, I guess you could say, but um, we're certainly taking steps in the direction. Great, thank you. So anybody, anybody else on this? Um, okay, and I, um, I did reach out, as we were talking, I did reach out to our Defender General and ask him if he wanted to add anything. And he said that he doesn't, that Marshall has handled the portion of this as we discussed it, he is good with it. And I agree and uh, understands that it, for some folks it's a compromise. So, uh, so I thank the Defender General. Uh, Ken. I I'm okay with this because I think as we're going through a, a, a process with these different correctional facilities, I would hope uh, Department of Corrections will make necessary uh, steps moving for, forward that if we have a problem, uh, they'll do something different to protect the under 25. Great. Other, otherwise, we're going to keep shipping people out of state, and it's uh, it's uh, that's not what we want to do, and everything like that. And I think it's just an adjustment period that I remain optimistic that it's going to work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, Barbara, and then I'm looking at the time. Um, I'm hoping that after Barbara, I'm hoping uh, we could take a vote on this. Thank you. 
so I'm wondering um, how amenable the committee would be to adding any language that says, um, because again, what Ken just said sort of cemented it for me. Like it's too easy for DOC to say, see, we, we've just got to do this because we're going to otherwise have to do that. And the recidivism rate for, I mean, at least nationally, I don't know if we have the data in Vermont, is going to be higher for, for young people that are incarcerated or are in programs with older um, prisoners. And I just don't want to give the message that we're okay with it. Like it, it shouldn't take the pressure off of DOC. And I understand that the uh, Defender General's office is okay with it, but I think as the legislature, it's just important for us to say, we stand by keeping, keeping young people um, in the mindset of being able to be rehabilitated and not necessarily exposing them in, in these situations. So I, I feel strongly about not supporting it unless there's some language that might speak to the, you know, to the concerns. Right. No, I, I, I understand that I do see that Defender General Mapolario came on. Um, did you want to weigh in or are you, I wasn't. Well, I've, I've been watching the whole time. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I'm, cl I'm clearly familiar with the, the bill you know, one of the things, if you are in our role as uh, part of the Defender General system is you're used to baby steps and you're used to incremental uh, positive steps toward where you hope to get. And as uh, Representative Burdett said, um, you know, they're, they're, ideally you'd want to see, uh, based on the science that we know today, uh, you know, uh, an accommodation for people who go up to, you know, age 25, 26. But when, as a practical matter, that's probably not going to happen, you get the best that you can out of the situation. And, you know, Marshall has worked this bill and he's been working on this issue literally for years. Um, and it's something that we, it, we really started on this uh, 10 years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, with trying to get deferred sentences, eligibility for deferred sentences, little by little up from, uh, you know, 18 years old, and then it was 21 years old, and then it was 26 years old. And now that um, this is deferred over the objection of the state's attorney. Um, and, you know, now it's eligible for everybody. Um, age isn't the factor. Um, and this is another one of those things on the checklist that we're making incremental progress on. We don't expect, you know, we'd love to see, um, you know, being able to get the whole enchilada, as they say. Um, but we also understand the political reality of it, and we'll take what we can get and go back to work at it uh, next year. Great. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, Matt. Thank you. Okay, so um, given our given our time and the testimony we've had, I would um, appreciate a motion to uh, to support draft one point two of S two thirty two. So moved. Second. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. And so, why don't we do a um, a show of hands? All those in favor, please. And Nader, if you can help me, it's a little tricky because there's so many people on the screen. Sure. Uh, okay, and then all those opposed. Okay, so I am just seeing one 
Opposed, Barbara, is that correct? I want to make sure. Barbara was the only one that I saw as well. Yes, I, I'm going to vote now. No, I appreciate that. That's fine. Right. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. Great. And then Coach is the only one who is absent, correct? Okay, great. And um, all right. And uh, folks get think about if anybody would like to report it, um, let me know. And uh, but right now, let's get back to uh, to the Senate bills because I do see government operations is here with us. 